The, um, we're going to start with an up. We, I mean, we're not going to do the minutes this time because there were some revisions for uh, that haven't been completed for Patty's minute. So we'll do it. Uh, we'll do that next next meeting. As an update for um, the budget. So I don't know how much you've been following the budget, but um, I think pretty much what Pam asked for, she got. They took a few things. Uh, the town administrator took a couple of things out, and I believe it looks like that the Board of Selectmen will support what's, um, the, what's was still in there. Uh, so that means that, they, that the Selectmen were supporting at least, I don't think they've taken their final vote yet. I believe they're not going to vote until maybe the 27th, yeah. 25th, 25th, yeah. I think they meet the same night as the RTM does. Uh, but uh, this was their indication, and the operating, they're supporting the additional maintenance position. Well, the uh, replacement maintenance position that we lost to Public Works, I guess last year or the year before. Uh, in the capital, they're supporting the short lane construction for $500,000. Um, and, and then they discussed parking, but they, they did, there was no, nothing definitive there. Um, Kate removed the basketball court and the Holohan backstop. The tree replacement program is still in. The playground equipment upgrade for $15,000 is still in. The irrigation time clock module for $8,000 is still in. The sunshade at Weed Beach. They picked Weed Beach because there's an offset from what is left from, I think, the playground group. There were six, not the playground group, at least a gift that was dedicated to Weed Beach for, I think it's for $6,000, so that that sunshade, well, you know, they, they were willing to put out $9,000 for it. And then the equipment replacement program for $45,000. Um, okay, I think that, I think Wait, that's could you it. just go back? I'm sorry, I the, the, no. What did you say about the playground equipment? Playground equipment upgrade for 15 here. I'll give you the machine. Don't okay. worry. Okay. Okay. I'll just give it to you. Yeah. Let me finish. Um, I've got a note to myself, which I'm sitting here reading it. That is why I was talking about. Okay. I think. Okay. The short lane construction, the $500,000 that, that, that's in the budget, in the capital budget. Uh, there will be a public hearing at the next um, commission meeting on the 27th for the um, for that project <clears throat> for the design. So anyone that wants to talk about it can talk then. Um, it seemed to be in the discussions of the uh, the selectmen that they were kind of interested in getting some of these projects done before they got to the big stuff with the, with the school. So but I think that's why perhaps why. Part of why Short Lane is, is being supported, and um, and they also, which is not in the Parks and Rec budget, but um, they also discussed Highland Farm, and they supported six hundred thousand dollars in capital expenditure for it. So I think that includes the parking lots, the walking path, the comfort station, the landscaping, and so um, like I said, the final I think the final budget vote is on. The 25th. Okay. So we're just uh, we were just reviewing the budgets. Anybody got any questions? Update on the Pear Tree Beach Improvement Project. We um, the uh, Pear Tree Beach Building Committee interviewed three firms on January 31st, and on February 6th they uh, we voted to uh, hire the firm of Landtech, which is based in Westport. There were three groups that we interviewed on the 31st. It was Lantech, Schmidt, and Neil Hawk. 
who was in conjunction with uh, Wesson and Samson. And in fact, all of these, all of them <coughs> were, you know, it wasn't just one, it was a group, a group, a group, you know, there were engineers, there were engineer groups, there were architects, they were all in each, in each of these groups. Uh, but we decided on land tech and we felt good about them. They were within budget and uh, I, we were unanimous. Uh, everybody agreed. So here's hoping it's going to be great. The next uh, building committee meeting will, will not be till March. I think it's March 6th. Town employee contract. Is anybody even following that information? <coughs> no. I read what you sent out. Yeah. Oh, good for you. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Is that following? <laughs> the, the, we have fine. we have one Thank employee you. that's in the is, that's covered under the contract, and I I stuck it in here. Anyway, okay, there it is. Okay, all right. Well, you know, if you read it, you'll know that um, I think they had trouble coming to, you know, to getting this. Passed. I mean, they went to, um, they were about to go to arbitration, and then they decided to try mediation, which did work for most of the, most of it. So I think it, it's pretty tight. Um, the average cost increase over the duration of the contract is 3.5%. Um, I watched the um, Board of Finances discussion, and I think they had, they had asked questions, uh, you know, of, of Kate Bush, and, um, and gotten their answers back, and they were, and they were um, okay with it. It seems to be in the interest of um, the town. Get my notes here. But the town's interested in moving to a defined contribution plan. Thank you. In the end, we were okay. <laughs> I appreciate your hurrying, um, and uh, and of course that. That's not ex not really where the um, uh, I don't I, at least I, I got the impression that that the uh, employees weren't so interested in that. However, so in this contract there is a um, provision that allows them to new hires to choose. So I can, they can choose either um, going by the way of the pension or to of the of the, uh, of the what I just said <laughs> of the defined contribution plan. And the, the kind of beauty of this part is that what they, they're going to hire um, civilian dispatchers so that all this, their dispatchers will be civilian dispatchers and, what they, and they'd like to be able to hire um, retired policemen. And this gives the policemen a, 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 the ability, well, the incentive to do that because they would still be able to get their pension and then in, in this new job they could um, have, a, have, a, have, a, have a retired have a defined contribution plan. So that's the, it's a three-year contract, and uh, that's the long and the short of what I know about it. Okay. And so I think we will not report on that, because we, we just had one, there are other people that have a lot more people in the, in the group. And Mark, can you remember anything more than what I just said? <laughs> no, that's, that's a pretty good summary. Okay. Um, so we'll let F and B and, and the others do that for us. Acceptance of the gift of $27,753.81 from the fireworks committee to the town. And this is what we, this is it's been assigned to us by rules, and so we do have to report at the art, we have to move the question and report at the RTM. And so what this is, is um, all this left from the money that was raised last year for the, for the fireworks. And last year, um, I think the selectmen decided that parks, they would like parks and rec so that to host the, de the festivities, and so they did. And so I don't have details on how much money was raised last year, I just know that this was what was left. So I uh, sort of contacted Susan Marks, and she's um, got back. We've been playing telephone tag, so I'll get a little bit more um, background on the on the just the whole uh, fireworks evening. 
um, before uh, we ha I have to make a speech on it. But, uh, last year it was, uh, let's see, they had um, food trucks. Mm -hmm. They had um, two bands. They had the, the community band and another band, and then of course the fireworks. So uh, I'm sure that um, Parks and Rec will do a great job taking care of it. So it will go in the Parks and Rec budget. And I think um, I think F and B will explain about the about the numbers and how it, the budget's going to be a little bit different. So they're going to be able to track revenue and and ex, you know expenses so that you can really see what's coming in and what's going out with the event. This is for the events that Park and Rec does. So um, that's that. So any questions? I have a motion. I do have a question. Okay. This. Who used to uh, run the fireworks? Pride well, funded it. Well, that's what I was going to say. No, no, private funded it. Yeah, but, but it was coordinated. Well, well Susan well, Mark Stacy, Stacy Tia. Yeah, there was a group of people. I yeah. thought it went through the depot a long time ago. That I don't know, mm -hmm. but I. So it wasn't a town department. No. no, it was not a town department. It was a, it was a, you know, a group, uh, you know, like a committee type thing. Yeah. But not a yeah. They did a fantastic job. They did, and, I, it just and I do know that Susan Marks was uh, uh, very uh, involved in it, and so we'll get the a little bit more of an explanation on how it worked. But I, I know that the selectmen thanked after the event, thanked you know Park Park and Rec, but they also thanked you know police and Post right. 53, right. and they so a lot, a lot of people, a lot of you know different there were contributions, but um, yes, exactly. That's the question. No, it was a volunteer group yeah. that did it. Did a nice job. It did indeed. It was good. It's it's a heavy load, though. I would think. I would think. Not much. That's why I'm curious. Who, yeah. Year yeah. after year. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, there was a there was a name listed, but it's, it's escaping me right now. It was in the notes that I had. So I do need a motion. Motion to accept the gift, or to uh, yes, to accept the gift from the fireworks committee of twenty-seven thousand seven hundred fifty-three dollars and eighty-one cents. Mark second. Sandy moves and Mark second. second. All in favor? Thanks. That's unanimous. <coughs> It's just me talking here, guys. <laughs> Doing uh, a great job. We may be at it in record time. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I think we're moving yeah. right on to the yeah. chairman's right. report. Right. Anything? Um, anybody have anything else to say? <laughs> <laughs> I just have a question. You're right. I have a question. Sure. Um, can you tell me when the um, I asked for the paddle thing is coming up again? Is there gonna? I don't think we know. Okay. That's I don't think we know. Right. If they can re reach a conclusion, you know, Jen, I guess it'll come back. It'll come to us. Okay. But uh, it hasn't yet. Okay. Thank you. That I, that I am aware of. Because it was unanimous. So. I did. I did notice that the VFW sponsors the push and pull okay. parade. I wondered if town if we were doing that too, but no. So, oh, here it is. If they thanked, they thanked Park and Rec, the Naroton uh, Heights Fire Department, the Darien Police, Post 53, Susan Marks, David Genovese, and generous sponsors. So those are the names that I garnered so far. Okay, Chairman's Report. Just a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, PNZ uh, responded to um, Parks and Recreation's um, <coughs> request for the uh, amendment to their ruling on Highland Farm. Um, <coughs> asked, uh, Park and Rec asked them to modify and clarify and amend the Commission's July 24th approval. In essence, PNZ mostly basically approved the request that uh, Parks and Rec made. 
uh, and we thanks to uh, Susan, we saw the letter straight away, I think before the commission <laughs> <laughs> saw it. Um, so, from as best I could understand from reading it, um, they let uh, the planning and zoning left the uh, port the portable the bathroom requirements of the portable bathrooms, how many they need, when they need them, and when they don't need them. They left all that to the discretion of Parks and Recreation. Um, they're going to allow the use of the property for uh, programming before the parking lots are paved. Um, they ask that gravel be put down in the interim in the parking areas. They um, granted them an extension until two, 2023 to finish the improvements that they would like to do there. You know that they had that were that was in this original ruling, and they're only requiring 30 minutes between programs with participants over th over. Th with over 30 participants in the program. And, it, and originally, the, I think a special event was, uh, was capped at 300 people, and now they changed the, the definition of a special event as any event that is not a programmed activity, and it's not, so it's not limited to 300 participants. However, uh, Parks and Rec self-imposed a limit of 92 cars, which is the amount of cars that can park in the two parking areas once they're done to be parked on the site. So, And then I think they're allowing uh, them to have a, an event that has amusement rides once a year and there was a discussion about the number of rides and I think they were limited to five. I'm not positive about that. What was the agreement on the number of the special events? That so wasn't changed. They didn't ask about that. Whatever that was in the original um, which I'd have to look up to give you the exact number. It was something like 10, wasn't it? Something around? It was 10 or 10, but I don't really know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly. It's, long it's, long it's, in, it's in the ruling, and I just gave you the July 24. Wow. Um, Does um, th these rules apply to the Oxford Trunk Club when they use the property? No, this guy says. Um, Oxford can only use the, the for one week. They have their own specific the rules, year. and no, I don't think that applies to no, them with the parking. Sure. They can do whatever they want. I think whatever it stipulates in that this original document is what is what they can do. Is this amusement the amusement park the amusement park rides? Is that that's like a, a handling happening type of yeah. is that a new item? Did that have to be approved by anybody, or is that just something they're throwing in there and saying this can happen? It's just a, I think it's a, I don't I know the answer to your question, truthfully. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. The only reason like I ask is because I was actually talking, I mean, just by yeah. chance, I happened to be in a room with a woman who lives in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And she said that she and her neighbors are just increasingly concerned about this plot of land and how the number of, or the types of events and the number of cars and everything's changing and she said it no, really, actually it hasn't. she said it doesn't feel like the original plan of kind of open space. She said it's just, they're, they're concerned. And oh. then so when you said that there could be a Hindley happening type of event there, I once thought. Once a year. Yeah, that's, that would once, be Once concerning. a year. Once a year. And would that event be capped at 92 cars? Yes. Mm -hmm. But all the other cars, I'm assuming, would park all along the road outside. I don't the think so. Walk. There's no parking out there. Oh, no park out there. Well, I think if there was, I, I don't think they would for this, or they would get ticketed. Mm. But I'm, I'm surprised <coughs> also that the, yeah, they out. can just make an amendment and, and change the original. Well, they applied to the commission, mm. to the park, yeah, the planning and zoning so commission, and, zoning. and the planning and zoning commission ruled just yeah. like they ruled on the original. Yeah. And they put a bunch of stipulations on it, and so this this actually amended some of those stipulations, yeah. I think, or clarified, or huh. clarified. Does ninety-two well, cars is that a lot in your opinion? Those are so those. Good. That's the size of the parking lots that planning and zoning, um, uh, 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 you know, agreed on in the original plan. Yeah, it's just not a very big crowd. Ninety-two cars. Is no, it's not. But you could put five people in a car. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I imagine yeah. people will Uber or still more. or. Or Uber, over. Right. Right. Or walk. <laughs> or walk. Yeah. Well, not that it matters, but I do not agree with putting an amusement park in there. Well, that's, excuse me. Could you hang on a minute? Yeah, absolutely. Five rides. 
That's not a lot. Five rides yeah. that have to stay 300 feet away from it, from from the uh, fence where the horses are. So before everybody gets upset. I, I, think, <laughs> I think the confusion lies in the fact that they talked originally about special events, and now we're hearing kind of these amusement rides, which nobody that, no, no, that's nobody a special really, event. It, well it is, but yeah. I don't think people were thinking that's about special event. amusement rides at the time with a special event. I would agree. Hmm. I'm, just lo I'm looking for your the number yeah. of events. I don't think it's done. I, I think, I don't I think, think maybe that people, most people are thinking like a dinner event like for Center for Hope or something like that that's outside. That's right. sort of or like a tent or yeah, what we do with the horse or, show. Right. I think it was more for a community events, right? To invite yes, the town, that, yeah, not just, for charity type yeah. stuff. Well, they're, I mean, I think they can, they, it can be charity, but right. um, it's, it's a community event. That mm -hmm. was the idea, mm -hmm. yes. Indeed. Okay. I was going to, let me see. It's a shame the original. Okay. All right. Here's your answer. Ten, harmony ten, with the ten, existing ten, setting. I know, I know. Here's your answer to the special events, and this is in the original thing: is that ten, ten town sponsored special events and five nonprofit sponsored special mm -hmm. events per year. That's what's allowed. That's not what. That's not necessarily what's going to happen. That's just what's allowed. Nor do you know the scope or size of each of those. Exactly. Exactly. That's just. That's that's just above a program, you know, a program, a program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just am glad somebody's going to be able to use it mm -hmm. because they have because the parking, because of the parking lot the way that it was written by PNC, then basically no one could use it mm -hmm. because the parking lots weren't finished. I'm glad it's used. I just hope that it will be in harmony with the natural setting. Yeah. Which to me does not include amusement park rides. I'm just saying. But you would, could stop. argue what part of town is conducive yeah. or in harmony with an amusement park? Your neighborhood or my neighborhood? Well, there is one two tenths of a mile from my front door at the Tokeni School, which is fine. It's been going on there mm -hmm. forever and they raise money well, on right, that. Right, but the, probably the first day they right. did it, it probably wasn't in harmony on that day at that time. But now. Yeah, but it's, it's different. It's different. The, the high ridge, the high Oxridge field, <laughs> is is very very quiet and peaceful. Tokenic School has a lot of kids and cars going all the time, so They're it's not a there. strange yeah. thing right. that all of a sudden there's a, a big commotion going on. But mm -hmm. at Oxridge, it's it's a peaceful piece of property. You when they have the horse show, it's got to have well, they got a lot of people there. They got a fight to get it They've got to fight to get it back. The rides are only going to be once a year. In addition to the 14 events that could possibly take place there. What's it, 14? There's five. A total of 15. Five charities and 10. I take your point. I take your back. Well, I, I, you know, I, I guess the proof's in the pudding. We'll see. And if there's any issues, then I'm sure things will happen. But I don't. My guess is that. Hmm. My take is that there won't be 10 events there. If there are 10 events, the, the events won't be 10 town-wide events. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have the stat, the parking, the park, the, you know, the park and rec staff, is just, there's not very many of them. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think we can, they can support very many. So who approves the events when they come down the pipeline? Like, how does that work? Who's uh, well, it would be just in the parks and rec department. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, I, you know, as long as it falls within, the guidelines are from the Planning and Zoning Commission. Then they have to say yes, or do they still get to kind of say yes or no? With Planning and Zoning? No, no. No, the Parks and Rec. How does that work? Well, if an application comes in and it fits within the criteria, do they have to say no if they have the space? or Do they do have they, to say yes yeah. to me? Yeah. No, I think it's generated from them. Unless it's a... Um, unless it's a... Um, Fundraiser for a um, nonprofit, and then then they could would say yay or nay, um, mm -hmm. whether they have. And then of course they have to talk to the, the hunt club as well, because they want don't want to overburden the uh, property with events. Mm -hmm. So I, I think everybody wants to be a good neighbor. Um, and the other is uh, the bags, the plastic yeah, bags. Plastic bags. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, did you guys watch or, or attend the uh, public hearing? I did. I watched, I got to not quite finish it, but I, I did watch. I did watch, and you were there, yeah. 
So when at the rules committee meeting, uh, Mark will tell you that um, the uh, which was the public works public works presented. public works I mean, the art cam committees that were assigned to the bag um, plastic bag and getting rid of plastic bags whatever you want to say the ordinance perhaps um, have been working really really hard <laughs> really hard and uh, so Monica McNally ran that public hearing and really she came and she was talking to uh, the rules and because she's on rules and um, just trying to get people's feedback on what would, you know what what the ordinance you know what you want in the ordinance and what and they they have TGSNA has has um, they they've written an ordinance but it's not complete and so they were getting feedback on that so it's it's coming and I guess that's what I'm that's just what I'm saying so it's not it's not cooked yet but it's it's coming. What kind of feedback did they get? Pardon? Was it positive or? It was about, I'd say about, was about 80% positive, 20% mm -hmm. negative. But she was very yeah. sensitive, uh, Monica was very sensitive to the local businesses and their concerns and trying to write the ordinance so it doesn't um, hurt the local, you know, small businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and so that really is the, the ticket. And then also staying legal with whether you can charge for bags or not charge for bags, and that sort of thing. So, uh, so they're still in process. I've got a but, uh, anything else, Mark? No, there's a lot of back and talk about, back and forth about in that draft ordinance that you described. A lot of blanks were left, mm -hmm. TBD, deliberately, yes. to allow debate and input from the different constituents. Um, I, I think some of the people who were at that meeting the other night were a little um, confused because they we're looking for an ordinance to speak to, and there wasn't one. So it was just basically giving your, your views, and I kept hearing from a couple of people sitting near me, but there is no ordinance. You know, so like, yeah. So they probably have to have another public the development hearing. development stage. I would assume they'll have another public hearing, right? Well, right, yeah. I would think so. I would guess Prior so, too. Prior to yeah. when, yeah. when the ordinance so comes out. I think, uh, look at my notes here, um, that the um, the three RGM committees are getting to are going to form a um, one committee, <coughs> three people from each committee: public works, uh, planning, is it planning and zoning or no? Uh, P <coughs> public health and safety, yeah, and uh, TGSNA, um, and see if they can hone in on 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 uh, just what you said, on uh, the ordinance. And then we'll see what they do, mm -hmm. I think. But that's the next step. The next step is that. And then I think they probably will come back to rules. Mm -hmm. Is that what you remember, Mark, in the discussion? I, I, it, it wasn't it was, stated. It kept going it back and forth. It was yeah. going to come back. Yeah, yeah. So we really don't know if this one <clears throat> who wanted to come and spend some time with us tonight, we'll be able to do that prior to... Yeah, I, actually, I got a request from the, I don't know, the back people, I don't know, they, they've got, you know, they've got letters, but I, you know, anyway. Um, yes, they would like to come and, and, and present to us, and, and they, I said, fine, come, they come tonight, but they couldn't do it, and so maybe at our next meeting they will, but perhaps that would be more useful, because maybe, maybe by, by then uh, we'll have an ordinance. Mm -hmm. And we can actually, you know, ask uh, uh, questions that are reasonable. Right. So, to be continued, I am sure. Okay. Is there anything anybody else wants to say? Oh, going going back to the build the Parity Point Building Committee is that um, they we picked the uh, architect, but they have to work out the contract. So you know it's not it's not a done deal yet. But uh, that they're they're working on those. And meant to say that. Um, any other business? I I have a question. I don't know if sure. it's the place to bring it up. Walking in from the parking lot, I'm uncomfortable. It's so dark. There are like three or four light things out. That's a good point. I, I, 
I'm very kind of scared of my, you know, the darkness and being alone up there. And it's this is down to the lower lot? No, yeah, but it's right here, right in front Maybe of the, in front front. the circle. Yeah, and lower yeah. lot, I don't know how many lights are up there. I just noticed up by yeah, there. It was huh. really dark, I noticed yeah. that too. And, and who do we bring that up to to maybe fix the light bulbs? I think oh, you say mean the light bulbs that aren't working. Yeah. In other words. Oh, yeah. excuse me. Yeah, three or four. Maybe the selectmen? I think there's a request. Put it over already. In, in the public works. You guys said it sounds like public works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's a uh, there's a place to submit. Okay. Any any resident can submit a request. Um, could I think probably also call the selectman's office mm -hmm. and tell her there your you concern go. and she'll direct yeah. you to the right. Yeah, I just I'm uncomfortable walking alone in the dark. Mm -hmm. And it's dark. Particularly when uh, when there's ice out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I always thought this either. building was very vulnerable. I never see anyone who checks who comes in and goes I out. I know. Uh, that is that is a very good point. Yeah. I you say don't that. quite understand yeah. it in this day and age. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I I'm mean, uncomfortable walking alone. Did not think about that. that. Hmm. Anyone else? <coughs> okay. Okay, so we'll, um, we'll adjourn. Ah. I second that. <laughs> <laughs> just about a half an hour. <laughs> Without that question, it would have been just a half an hour. <laughs> yeah. Very nice.